Welcome everyone to the course for the introduction to the bio biodiversity of Taiwan. And this course is uh, specifically uh, designed for international students to um, get some uh, very basic understanding for uh, the biodiversity in Taiwan. And this is this course is also um, give, uh, can provide uh, some opportunity for the local student um, to understand their own nature and um, uh, their surroundings um, uh, in English. So, um, so this course is uh, kind of a uh, very basic introduction and um, mostly designed for the non-major, uh, non-biology majors. So, um, this uh, I will try to keep um, the course content uh, as simple as possible, and you don't really need to know um, a lot of uh, scientific names and so on. And uh, we have a SEBA website uh, for uh, all the uh, teaching material will be available online. And for this course, uh, we don't have a specific textbook. And, and as you can imagine that uh, we don't really have a good um, English textbook for the introductory level of the bio biodiversity in Taiwan. But we do um, uh, have some of the material uh, which are in Mandarin and a lot of uh, uh, photos uh, 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 av available as well. And I list some of the reference on the, on the handouts uh, for everyone. And you can uh, check out the, um, the reference uh, from the main library of NTU, or um, they are also available from my own lab uh, office. And you can take a look uh, of what you need. And we have two main instructors. And I'm Jeremy Minghu, and there's uh, another one, uh, Yu De Ding. Uh, will be uh, another major instructor, and we will have some other um, invited speakers to talk about some of the specific uh, subjects, and which I will int introduce a little bit later. And this slide shows the syllabus for uh, for this course. If you um, look at the schedule uh, on the syllabus uh, on your handout, and we have uh, several um, arrangement for the course. Uh, except for um, one holiday uh, during a semester, we um, will have 16 weeks of um, uh, lectures, um, including some of the group presentation, where I will explain a little bit uh, later on. And uh, first, I will uh, introduce, uh, today I'm going to introduce some of the uh, diverse biodiversity issues, and, and also the lecturers are going to present in this semester. And then we are, uh, we are going to follow by uh, some of the natural history and exploration in Taiwan, and, uh, especially on some of the um, uh, Westerners and Japanese um, uh, researchers' um, has, uh, uh, studies in Taiwan. And then we're followed by two um, uh, campus tours and to uh, the uh, TI Abarian and also the zoological museums uh, inside this building. Um, the first um, is to the TI Iberian and also some of the associate uh, like greenhouse and also um, some of the campus um, plants uh, we are going to see uh, on that day. And we'll divide, probably divide into uh, two groups if we have uh, too many people um, uh, on that day. And also for the uh, zoolog zoological museums, we're going to visit the, uh, some um, museums downstairs, and uh, also some of the um, uh, collections, um, uh, like the mammal collections and aquatic, plant, uh, aquatic uh, animal collections um, uh, as well. We have uh, two other outside classroom um, lectures, and uh, aside from the, the, the two trips um, uh, within NTU campus. And one is to Taipei Zoo, and the other one is to um, TFRI Insect Museum. I will talk about that a little bit later. And before the spring break, we have two lectures on uh, a general environment, and um, uh, probably um, more or less focus on the uh, vegetation and the, uh, the flora uh, of Taiwan. Uh, introducing the lowland to um, the high altitude, from, uh, which means from uh, the sea level to the, the highest peak in Taiwan. So give you a general idea about um, the uh, nature habitat uh, of Taiwan. And after the spring break, uh, we'll start with uh, a series of uh, lectures um, uh, over by um, uh, many lecturers, including myself. 
and start with the live on intertidal regions um, uh, talked by Benny Chen and um, a general um, introduction to the uh, fauna of Taiwan uh, by uh, Dr. Yude Lin and we'll have a, a lecture on dolphins and whales in Taiwan's water uh, since we have um, a specialist uh, on, on uh, dolphins and whales uh, by uh, here and the lecture will be conducted by Dr. Zhou and then um, we we'll have uh, two um, outside classroom lectures and uh, a very special one is um, on um, the, uh, the 5th of May uh, on Saturday and it's a uh, different time from, uh, for, from the week so for the week uh, we don't have a lecture time uh, on Thursday instead we we'll have a lecture uh, on Saturday to the Taipei Zoo and um, uh, Dr. Zhao, Zhao um, will have uh, an introduction to um, some of the uh, the, um, uh, the the layout and setup of the Taipei Zoo, and uh, we'll uh, um, visit some of the uh, the, the facilities uh, inside Taipei Zoo for um, uh, to give you some of the overview of the uh, conservation um, uh, efforts we have been made um, inside the uh, Taipei Zoo, and. And then we are going to visit the uh, uh, Taiwan Forest Research Institute uh, Insect Museum and it is one of the very best insect museums in Taiwan and um, Dr. Zhao, uh, Rong Tai Zhao will give you an um, um, introduction and uh, a little bit of tour to um, a great collection of the insects um, they have in, in TFRI and also um, he will uh, talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, some of the, uh, the issues on insect uh, conservation too. And after the, uh, the two outside classroom lectures, we will move back to the, the classroom and I will talk a little bit about the plants and people and a little bit about the uh, ethnobotany issues and just to um, give you some idea about uh, the plant utilization uh, in, in Taiwan. And then um, I will likely summarize the, uh, the, the, the lectures, uh, the former lectures uh, on the status of biological conservation uh, in Taiwan um, uh, and we'll have a special topic um, uh, at the end of the semester. The next two uh, lecture time for the, this course will, will be the, uh, the group presentation by um, uh, all of you and I will explain a little bit later um, uh, when I talk about the, the grading of this course. So now I'm going to uh, explain a little bit about uh, how we grade um, this course and we'll have um, uh, several essays um, which comprise about 30% of the, the points and uh, the term paper about 20% and a group report and final presentation for 30% and um, and then the uh, the environment in the classroom, including a, the uh, the discussion, and will be about twenty percent of um, uh, the grade. And so in total, um, we will not have um, a written exam or uh, any final exam at the end. Instead, we'll um, try to encourage students to con uh, to write some term papers and um, also. Uh, uh, some of the interviews I will explain a bit later. So um, each of the, the student will need to write the, um, the essays from three out of the four outside classroom visits during the course, which include uh, the two campus tours, one to the Abarian, the other to the uh, Zuozarko Museum, and uh, the third is a visit to Taipei Zoo, and the fourth uh, a visit to the, the Taiwan Forest Research Institute Institute in same museum. So you only need to choose uh, three out of the four um, visit and write an essay um, uh, on, on, on those visits and um, I will hand out um, some uh, several questions before the visit so you will then um, uh, write the essays accordingly and uh, which uh, for example I might want to ask uh, uh, what is the um, the setup for um, uh, some of the museum or the herbarium, and uh, what is uh, the problems and uh, how to solve it, and uh, and so on. So um, 
uh, you only need to submit three, um, and uh, I will not uh, take uh, a fourth essay if you uh, uh, submit more, um, because um, I want, well, I don't want to uh, spend too much time about uh, uh, some extra time in, um, on the essays anyway. And uh, so each of the uh, three essays will correspond to 10% of the final grade um, uh, on the course. And that's for the essays. And for the term paper, um, each of the uh, of you will need to choose an organism that is native to Taiwan, uh, so any native species, um, and write a five-page essay uh, to introduce the organism. And uh, and this the deadline to to hand in the report is uh, um, June eighteen. And this uh, native plant could uh, native species could be either a plant, a fungus, or an animal, um, um, marine animal, insects, anything, and of your own choice. Um, uh, and I will ask uh, all of you um, to consult the lectures uh, if you have any question or problem finding your object. And you can find uh, anything is. Uh, um, native or uh, not not necessarily endemic, but uh, uh, endemic species would be nice. Um, I will uh, provide some of the guidelines for um, for the essay. For example, for uh, you need to introduce um, when um, when did the uh, the species was named by whom, and uh, how about the uh, the studies has been done um, on any issues like the reproduction or uh, some interesting. Uh, biogeographic studies and anything, so um, so this will comprise about twenty percent of your final grade. So it's very important um, uh, part of the, uh, your grading. And the third part of um, uh, your uh, your grading will uh, will based on some group efforts, and uh, um, all the students will be divided into groups up to four persons, and you can. Um, Choose uh, your groupmates, and uh, if you can't, uh, we'll uh, likely assign one for you. Uh, if so, and um, each group will conduct an interview of researchers who study biodiversity related subjects in Taiwan. So um, you can um, uh, interview these uh, uh, preferably PI, which means the professors, and but you can also. Um, uh, interview um, any uh, experts um, uh, outside the campus too, um, uh, because actually there are a lot of um, so-called amateurs actually um, which are really experts um, in in a certain uh, group of uh, species, and um, you uh, you can uh, you have to. Um, Sharing the name uh, of the interview uh, people before the lecture on um, uh, March uh, twenty-seven, and uh, and please do not conduct any interview uh, without um, the consultants and the confirmation from the the lecturers, uh, me and also Dr. Yu De Ling, because uh, we don't want the uh, the researchers uh, to be um, overwhelmed by. Um, by those interviews, um, uh, and also we don't want to uh, have um, duplicates. So uh, if s some group already turn the name, and uh, so you cannot interview the very same person uh, for um, uh, for that. Uh, so uh, be sure to turn the name um, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, don't wait until the deadline, and um, so. Uh, and, and for the report, uh, the group report, uh, the deadline um, is to hand in the written report is um, June fifth, and it's uh, uh, it will be half of this uh, group report um, um, uh, points, and the other half will be based on the, the final presentation uh, of the, the the whole group, and uh, each group will present the result of the interview and. Um, uh, which means that uh, I will give you like ten to fifteen minutes to um, talk about the researcher itself and uh, and what uh, he or she uh, has been has been doing on on these uh, biodiversity issues, and uh, just a brief introduction of um, a, a more uh, I prefer a more specific uh, topics 
not necessary to talk about all the topics of the researchers. And um, anyway, and some of the further instruction will be provided uh, later on. So, um, so these three uh, major part of um, uh, uh, the report in essays will comprise eighty percent of your grading. And I, um, I will hope to, um, uh, to, to let you um, ex experience experience uh, some of the. Uh, um, researches uh, or studies in, in Taiwan um, by yourself and um, I think it's more um, uh, uh, interactive um, uh, in this way. Taiwan is uh, very rich in their um, biodiversity but uh, also as you can imagine that because Chinese people um, uh, like to eat a lot of different kind of food and so um, you, as you can see that um, uh, we also uh, consume a lot of uh, div uh, the variety of um, uh, the plant species and the animal species. And uh, one of the issue is um, the, the shark fin soup you can see from the market. And although some of, um, of the soup right nowadays are actually fake fin, uh, not uh, the, the real shark fin. But still, uh, this is a, a major issue uh, for um, uh, preserving the biodiversity in Taiwan. And, but before we are going to, um, to talk about the biodiversity uh, in Taiwan, we have to talk about some general issues uh, about the biodiversity itself. And next slide here. And the term biodiversity uh, basically is a summary um, of biological diversity, including the, um, the different labels for um, uh, the, the, the diversity, the variability. What you say, and which means that um, uh, that uh, from within the species, the genetic diversity to between species diversity to the whole ecosystem diversity uh, are the main foci for uh, studying the biodiversity. But uh, how do we really measure the biodiversity? Usually, um, people when we talk about the biodiversity, we mostly talk about the so-called alpha diversity, which means that we only count the species number for, um, uh, for ma to measure uh, the biodiversity. For example, in the area, um, area 8, we have uh, 10 different species, and area B has 100 different species. Then we call uh, area B has a higher biodiversity than uh, in area A. Although this definition might sound very simple, but uh, um, in a biological term, uh, the definition of the species sometimes is troubling because um, in animal system, it might be easier uh, that um, uh, all the different species um, cannot enter a hi uh, hybrid. But in a plants or, or in fungi, for example, and um, the between species hybridization is, is very common. So uh, therefore, um, how to really count for the species are, um, have some, some problems in, in, in a certain group of uh, uh, plants or other uh, organisms. But still, uh, this is one of the, the very simple and easy um, definition uh, for the, to measure uh, the biodiversity um, uh, in a certain area. Next slide. So if we want to know um, uh, the biodiversity for a certain area, and then we will need to have um, need to know uh, how to really count for the species number and what do they mean about uh, the, the numbers. Because if we count all the species from a certain region, we can count for um, some of the uh, species are already um, uh, in the area or some of the exotic species um, which are um, introduced or moved from outside of the area uh, by human or by some other reason. So basically, uh, if we categorize the species um, based on this, um, uh, if they are native or if they are from outside, we can ca categorize basically into two different um, uh, labels. One is the native or we call it endogenous species. The other one will be exotic or the alien species. And for the native species, uh, the definition is basically um, it's just the presence uh, of the species is a result from a natural process, uh, which uh, 
without um, any human intervention. So by this definition, human is not part of this natural process. Um, it is for uh, the, the modern human. But so as you can imagine that this definition is uh, some, somehow is a little bit vague because how do you know the prehistory uh, human activities if they uh, distribute certain species from one area to another area? Uh, do we still call that nature or not? Um, uh, native or not? So basically, uh, the current definition only uh, deal with those um, uh, with documents. So anything uh, with documentation on, on the introdu uh, introduction of certain species by human, then that would not be considered as a native species. And so this is uh, uh, just for conventional um, convenience uh, purpose to give this definition. And we know that this is pre uh, uh, artificial. And for those exotic species, and we can categorize based on um, their uh, wildness uh, to the, 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 the introduced species, the naturalized species, and the invasive species. The introduced species uh, means that um, uh, the s some of the species or the plants or animals, they were introduced by uh, some of the purpose or non-purpose by human into a certain area like uh, horticultural purpose or to um, for uh, some of the animals, they just for demonstration. And if this species, uh, usually uh, in some cases, those species uh, will not survive after one generation since they cannot reproduce uh, in this uh, specific habitat because it is not their uh, native habitat. And if, but if they are able to uh, reproduce by themselves uh, without any problem, then we call it this species is become naturalized, which means that they are, uh, can use this new habitat as their new home. And in some cases, um, the species can be very invasive, which means that um, it, they can perform even better than the local um, uh, species, which means that they can outcompete um, the original, the endogenous species, even if this is not their or original habitat. And so this is um, the exotic species. But if we um, look at the native species, there we can also um, uh, deal with two different um, issues here. One is that some of the native species uh, you can actually find in other species, uh, in other places as well. Like uh, some of the plants or animals you find in Taiwan, and actually they can also be found in Japan or in, in many China. Then um, this is one, um, uh, one of the, uh, the case. Uh, but in some, ca in some cases, uh, one species are restricted to uh, a particular region that can, for example, they are only found in Taiwan or um, they can only f be found in Japan but nowhere else. Then we call it an endemic species which is only found in a certain place, which is endemic to Taiwan or endemic to United States, for example. And these endemic species um, are, are usually uh, the, the conservation uh, focus um, for uh, the, the local people, for um, the, the Chinese people, for American people, for the European people, because they are unique in a certain area. And next slide here. But um, here is, I give you some of the example for uh, the native in, uh, and also the invasive species uh, here, because this is basically kind of um, um, uh, comparative, um, relatively speaking. And uh, on the picture uh, on the right of the slide is uh, the mountain Kuzu uh, in, in Taiwan, and this this um, unique plant um, uh, is, is a legume, and it is um, native to uh, East Asia, from Japan to Southeast Asia. And the uh, scientific name is Peruria Montana. And the, another uh, very close related species, uh, Peruria lobata, which is the kuzu. And um, as some of you, uh, if you are from America, and you will be uh, uh, you probably are aware of this uh, 
the Kuzu plan because right now it's a very uh, a big problem um, uh, as Kuzu can climb up to the forest and basically cover everything as you can see on the lower part of the slide and basically then it will uh, it will block out all the sunlight of uh, the, the trees and uh, and then will uh, the tree underneath will, will die and this Kuzu plan was introduced um, by uh, by by Japanese um, in, in 1876 in the Sanatio uh, Exposition in Philadelphia. They uh, bring this plan to um, show to people, but um, somehow it will escape and, uh, and it grows everywhere um, and, uh, in the east, uh, eastern part of the United States. And so this particular species, they are native to East Asia. It's not that invasive but it's very um, it's exotic and very invasive in the United States. And there are several uh, examples uh, we'll see later on of, uh, in, the, in the lecture, uh, like there's uh, another way around. It's native in America, but it's uh, uh, exotic in, in Taiwan. So for, um, uh, as we just mentioned, that um, uh, endemic species are the major focus for um, uh, for conservation biology issues, and but um, you have to keep in mind that endemism uh, for the endemic species are based on geological um, uh, boundaries, is but not uh, political boundaries. But sometimes it is hard uh, for uh, for uh, the people to un to really understand th these kind of issues because. Um, uh, the current flora, uh, kind of uh, the book or the print, uh, the species list, for uh, are mostly um, organized by country, like uh, this uh, the species list from Vietnam, uh, the the flora of Japan, and so on. And but uh, when we say it's endemic to China, which means that uh, it's only restricted to China, but in some case the the plant or animals or insects. They are. They don't really care about the, the country boundary. They are, they are moving around, and so we might not be able to really um, uh, to distinguish uh, which a certain species is endemic to a certain area, but not the area, and so on. But anyway, in Taiwan, it's a little bit uh, convenient because Taiwan is an island. So um, anything outside of Taiwan, um, if you cannot find outside the Taiwan island. Then, um, then we'll say uh, this species is endemic to Taiwan. So that's that's uh, easy part uh, for this definition. And usually, uh, in general, the species richness and also the endemism are somehow correlated, uh, which means that um, if you have a lot of uh, endemic species in a certain area, um, usually you will also have a lot of um, the overall native species uh, in, in that area. And this is uh, very um, useful uh, in practical use in conservation biology, uh, since that uh, if you uh, preserve a certain uh, area for a particular place uh, or a particular endemic species, uh, which will mean that uh, you are also protecting some other uh, related uh, species uh, and so on. So this is um, give you some of the idea about uh, endemism uh, and also the richness of um, the, the local area. Next slide here shows you um, some of the numbers for the, uh, the species number uh, to major uh, for the biodiversity. And I categorize them into the fungi, plant, and animals, the three major kingdoms um, uh, of organisms. and. The first column here are the global species, which means the, all over the world. And we can see um, we, uh, there are 75,000 species of fungi all over the world, and about 300,000 species of plants, and uh, about um, one, uh, one million uh, species of animals um, uh, all over the world. Mostly, most of them are actually insects. And the second column is the species number uh, we can find in Taiwan. 
And so far, we have a pretty good database for um, categorizing um, these three major kingdoms. And we have about 6,000 uh, fungi species and over 6,000 plant species and about 53,000 uh, animals and uh, half of them are um, insects. Um, and the last column here uh, on the right are the percentage of endemic species uh, found in Taiwan. And this is kind of an index for how unique uh, is uh, the biodiversity in a certain area, or uh, in this example, in Taiwan. And we have about 2% of the fungi are endemic, and about a quarter of uh, the species uh, are endemic for the plants. And over 60% of the animals uh, species are endemic. And this is a, a, a quite high um, a number as if you uh, compare to other regions. As, uh, so you can imagine like uh, over half of the animal species you, you encounter in Taiwan will, be, uh, will not be able to find in any, anywhere else uh, outside of Taiwan. So this shows you uh, some of the idea about the uniqueness of um, the Taiwan's uh, biodiversity. And the number for the fungi is, uh, uh, well, although it looks kind of low, but if you imagine that, uh, because fungi are dispersed by spores, and the spores um, can uh, very easily get out by wind. So usually the endemic uh, percentage of fungi are, are quite, quite low. But for plants and animals, at least, uh, these numbers are quite high. And next slide here shows you some of the uh, information for um, uh, the, the percentage of the endemic species found all over the world. And actually, uh, so here are uh, some of the area we identify as the biodiversity hotspots uh, all over the world and number from 1 to 34. And here, um, you can see here, um, over 40% of the mammal species are uh, actually found in, uh, more or less in those um, hotspot area. And so this hotspot area um, basically are um, the, the cradle or re refugee for um, the, the high uh, biodiversity um, area. So as you can see he, uh, uh, on, on the slide, um, many regions like the Amazons, like the Central America, like the Madagascar, and uh, uh, one of the major um, biodiversity hotspots is the Southeast Asia. And Taiwan is um, uh, a little bit above the hotspot for the Southeast Asia, above the, the Philippines, and, uh, and also the south of the, uh, the uh, Japan area. And Taiwan is um, actually uh, at a very unique and uh, position in that its um, influence, uh, the uh, the biota itself is influenced um, by the nearby regions, and because Taiwan itself is uh, kind of young in uh, geological uh, time, and so um, Taiwan has a very unique combination from uh, the different biotas from the. the nearby regions. Here I would like to uh, give you some of the introduction for uh, some of the conservation uh, efforts has been made in Taiwan. Uh, we just talked about that um, uh, in the early part of the, the course that um, uh, we have a very rich in bi biodiversity, but we also are um, have a great consumption on the, um, the diversity of food. But um, uh, the, the, be the good th good part of it is uh, the environmental um, awareness for protection uh, is happens like 30 years ago in Taiwan. And so a lot of efforts has been made um, to try to protect um, the, the, uh, the, some of the habitat in Taiwan and some of the animal and plants in Taiwan. Uh, but of course, um, there are still uh, a lot of uh, species are endangered. Uh, nowadays. And the protected areas in Taiwan can be divided into several different categories. And the first one will be the national parks, and the second will be the, uh, the nature reserve, and um, which is uh, limited um, to the visitors. 
and the national park will o basically open to um, the, the publics, but it's still restricted in, in certain uh, area, of, um, prohibit for the publics to, to visit. And the third category is the wildlife refugee, and, and also uh, in the fourth one, uh, the, the major wildlife habitats. And for those two categories, basically uh, all publics are, in, are prohibited to um, go inside uh, those regions and and um, the, the researchers um, and uh, needs to uh, write a report and uh, to get a permit in order to uh, study any of the, the uh, animals or plants in in those regions. And we also have um, a, a forestry reserve which um, um, related to the forestry issues, and because um, uh, the forestry um, the, uh, are one of the the major uh, economic uh, activities in Taiwan and we already chopped down a lot of um, the trees um, uh, before and we'll talk about that later. And uh, the next uh, category is the, uh, the coastal protection area which is uh, uh, at a lower um, a level of protection for, um, for the habitat. And next slide here shows you the, uh, the di distribution of the national parks in Taiwan. And currently, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight national parks in Taiwan. The first um, national park established uh, is Kanding National Parks uh, in 1984. And uh, during the 1980s, um, there are several other uh, national parks was established. And, and this is, uh, again, it's an uh, uh, um, environmental um, awareness for uh, try to um, protect the, uh, the habitat uh, uh, in these regions. And so the Talako National Park uh, was established in the uh, Yushan National Park in the, uh, the, the central part of Taiwan was established and also the Xueba National Park was uh, established later on. And he, uh, those are the major um, national parks established during the 1980s and uh, protecting uh, the, some of the major chunk of the, uh, the lands uh, for, uh, for, for wellness. And um, in the 2007, um, uh, and there, um, there are uh, some of the other national parks was established um, between um, uh, the year uh, 1990s and 2000. And there's uh, Kingman National Park was established most for um, the historical um, uh, uh, reasons and some of the old buildings, and also it was a uh, uh, part of the uh, uh, war field. And Dongsan uh, National Park is uh, kind of unique. It's, um, uh, it's coral reef, um, a national park, and I've never been to that part because it's, uh, you have to take a boat or uh, some small plane to, to go there. It's not that easy. And there's a, a Taijiang National Park uh, was uh, established to preserve some of the habitat for um, the water birds. And we have uh, a lot of migrating birds um, in Taiwan. And actually, Taiwan is one of the hotspots for, for birding. Um, a lot of tourists just to see birds um, nowadays come to Taiwan just to see, uh, see that. And similarly, there are several other um, area you can see um, the, the bird habitat. And besides these uh, national parks, there are several um, national parks has been uh, been planning and but was not be able to uh, establish. For example, the, um, the Magao uh, National Park, um, the uh, Nandan National Park, and also Layu National Park. And those national parks uh, were planned by the governments but was actually denied by the local uh, Aboriginal people that um, those uh, indigenous uh, Aboriginal people, they do not want uh, to have a national park in their land. And that's uh, another very interesting issue. We will talk about that. And uh, why um, do those people want to have a national park? Uh, because theoretically, this um, the establishment of the national park is to protect the area and to make uh, uh, be more sustainable uh, for the future. But 
is similar. Uh, obviously, this is some um, have some conflict of interest. But uh, we'll talk about that uh, later uh, on this on this part. But anyhow, and uh, some of the national parks, like the middle part of Taiwan, um, has uh, a lot of um, uh, areas covering uh, the mountains as uh, over three thousand meter uh, altitude. And this is one of the example for Nan Hu Da Shan, and one of my favorite uh, places to go. And this is extremely beautiful. And um, in this high mountain area, we have uh, uh, the endemic species percentage uh, for the species are uh, really high. Um, maybe uh, over 70 or 80 percent of the plant species are endemic. So this is kind of a unique habitat. We'll also introduce that part um, a little bit later, that this is one of the treasure uh, for uh, biodiversity in Taiwan, is high mountains. And in the high mountains, um, uh, this is uh, another view for the pine trees um, in the a, a middle part of altitude. And also, this is uh, another uh, plant species, Parola morrisonensis. And it's commonly found um, in a high uh, altitude, and very uh, small and beautiful um, herbs. You can see uh, on, 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 on the way to the mountains. And the next slide show here are the uh, 20 nature uh, reserves on uh, uh, Taiwan. And they are mostly um, to protect a, s a specific uh, species like uh, we call it um, uh, the idol species um, uh, concept. So for example, if we protect um, some of the species uh, of the, the genus birds, and that means that uh, we are going to protect the whole habitat um, which has this species. And because we are protecting the whole area, we are also protecting um, all the species related to um, this particular species. And um, I'll give you some more example for the, the natural reserve here. And here is uh, Jing Shui Ying Natural Trail. It's, um, uh, it's the way to, um, uh, to the Dao Natural Reserve, um, which is the, actually the biggest part uh, on the previous slide for the re natural reserve area uh, on the southern part of Taiwan. And this uh, particular um, place is uh, to preserve a very unique species, Amato Texas from Masana. Uh, uh, as, as you can see the photo on the lower part of the slide. And this is a very unique um, plant species, uh, a general sperm, which only found in a certain group of the, um, uh, on those regions. And in that particular region, is, um, uh, the humidity is always very high. And I believe probably a qu um, a quarter, over a quarter of the year, the humidity is up to 100%. And um, so because of this unique habitat, uh, we not only have these uh, Amato Texas species, but also several other unique species uh, were found in this, uh, this region. And I just mentioned that uh, it was next to the, the very large Dao National Reserve. And that area is also um, overlap with the Wildlife Natural Reserve area and to preserve some of the wildlife um, in, in, in Taiwan. So um, for example, uh, for the, the, the um, Taiwan black bear and some other um, animals are uh, more or less easier uh, to be found in, in those regions. And this is uh, another species like um, um, Catalaria. Uh, these uh, particular species are only found in two places uh, in Taiwan one uh, in the north and the other one uh, down south. So this is kind of very unique distribution for, for a plant, why there's nothing in between, but only found in those two regions. And so this is also kind of um, unusual. And so for this particular uh, species, uh, also is endemic to Taiwan, and we put up a protective uh, nature reserve to um, protect this species. And next slide here uh, shows the wildlife protection area. There are totally seven, uh, 17 of them. And the covering area is a little bit smaller than a previous um, a national park or national reserve. And the main purpose is to preserve some of the uh, 
uh, the habitat for the wild animals. And um, actually, is uh, a lot of them uh, uh, overlap with some several other um, uh, the national parks or natural reserve uh, on previous slides. And you can just read the, the names on the, on the slides. And here are the two examples for those wildlife um, protecting area. Um, this is uh, the Dadu um, Entry uh, Wildlife Refugee. And this uh, mostly to preserve um, the habitat uh, for the water birds. And we will be able to see a lot of different kind of water birds, um, like the, the tater um, on, on the slide. And there's another protected uh, area in Penghu, the Penghu County um, uh, Wangan Island Green Turtle Breeding Refugee. And uh, in this particular area, you, uh, you can see uh, a lot of green turtles um, laying eggs uh, on, on, the, on the seashore. And uh, right now, it's actually become a, a very um, famous tourist area. Uh, a lot of people just go there and watch the, uh, the, the green turtles to, uh, to, lay, to lay eggs. So this, um, in this particular case, that's to protect this particular uh, species of turtle. The next slide here uh, shows um, another uh, category for major wildlife habitats and for um, for this category, um, many of them they also associate with um, how to um, uh, to re uh, recover um, the, uh, the already fragmented or destructive habitat. And one of the example is for um, one area in Wulin is to preserve the Formosan landlocked salmon and uh, most of the uh, a lot of the, the, the salmon species uh, they um, uh, they will um, go upstream to uh, a certain area to lay their eggs and and then die um, um, and but um, in a certain area like in, in the case in Taiwan it become landlocked because of um, uh, when they move out to the upstream of the river and uh, the habitat will change they, they will not be able to um, move out to the ocean so they will remain um, within this uh, uh, stream habitat and it become then locked and so for this particular case of salmon and uh, this uh, become also a, a very uh, famous um, uh, conservation efforts to try to uh, recreate the habitat and to uh, also to breed um, uh, the salmons uh, by human and uh, and also uh, and put the fish um, back, in, back into the stream for um, to to see if they can uh, uh, recapture um, the, uh, the the population. So uh, for this kind of um, uh, wildlife habitats, um, this uh, uh, mostly for uh, to bring back uh, some of the uh, uh, the wildlife from the habitat. And the next category is the coastal protected uh, protection area. Uh, we basically have 12 of them. And uh, in Taiwan, uh, the western part of Taiwan uh, was heavily influenced by human population and also um, a lot of uh, industry or um, the agricultural activities will happen on the west, western part of Taiwan. And so most of the, uh, uh, the protect protection uh, are uh, on, on the west west coast are uh, for the the water birds and so on, and but in comparison on on the east coast, um, many of the east coast uh, in Taiwan are still uh, more or less um, preserved in a, a non disturbed um, uh, situation. So, uh, for example, like the Hualien area, uh, or example the Yilan area, you still can see a very um, uh, a beautiful scene and without a human uh, inter intervention. And also down south, this uh, also kind of unique in Taiwan, uh, because the, the biota in Taiwan, on the southern part of Taiwan, is uh, more uh, toward to subtropical, to tropical region. And so that's kind of unique uh, compared to uh, uh, some other part of Taiwan. And next slide here is uh, the Qingshui area uh, near Hualien. 
a very beautiful place. Uh, if you have not been there, um, be sure to um, uh, make a plan uh, to visit there, and well, especially in a, in, in a good day. Uh, uh, during the summer, there are a lot of typhoons in, in Hualien, so uh, be aware of that. But if the weather is good, the, the ocean is really blue, and uh, on the east coast uh, of Taiwan, you can see most of the mountains are very steep, and um, because the, the 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 geology, so um, so the the ocean is also very deep, um, um, very close close by area. So this is quite different from the western part of Taiwan. Like uh, um, you will see most of the sandy area uh, in in western part of Taiwan but mostly uh, rocks um, in uh, the eastern part of Taiwan. But although we have uh, a lot of uh, very beautiful places like this, um, but um, as we can imagine it, um, there are a lot of people in Taiwan now. And um, so uh, we are also facing um, some of the, the big challenge uh, for uh, human intervention for the natural habitat. Like in this slide here, um, this is the Yellow region um, in the uh, northeastern part of Taiwan. And uh, this region is very unique in their geological formation. And you can see very, um, very steep and very interesting rocks um, shape and, uh, uh, in the sandy rock region um, over here. But um, also, uh, we have a lot of people um, going there and um, uh, without any protection for um, uh, for the trail, so people can just walk there, and um, a lot of tourists um, out there, um, and not only the local people, but from from the all over the world. Um, so they they visit here, they they go there, and basically uh, um, the the heavy um, tourists activities um, are actually hurting the, um, uh, the, the geological formation here. But um, uh, still, this is uh, kind of um, a, a challenge for conservation issues, and we might uh, want to discuss, that, discuss about that later. But um, in, in any case, um, uh, Taiwan is really rich uh, um, in the biodiversity. And uh, we hope this course um, can provide some of the overviews for uh, to let you know that how um, what do we have here, and uh, because when, for example, uh, when I was a child, and I mostly only know some of the local uh, flora or um, some of the insects around uh, my house, but um, uh, very little um, uh, to know about some other places uh, in Taiwan. So this is a great opportunity for uh, all of uh, your students to uh, to be able to see what um, what rich um, is the biodiversity uh, for uh, for Taiwan, and uh, hopefully um, at the end of the course, and you will be uh, start to cherish more about these habitats, and uh, uh, hope you too can influence uh, all of your family and friends and uh, hopefully to protect it uh, forever. So this is um, the end of uh, this lecture, and I hope to see you next time.